Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. This is my next video on the topic Volumetric Titration. Though I have already uploaded so many videos on the topic titration and different type of titrations we have discussed in several videos. For example, acid-based titration, precipitation titration, redox titration and complexometric titrations etc. But still, I am having so many questions from my students that what is called titration and how we can perform this titration, how this titration works actually inside the conical flask. After having such questions, I thought I should make a separate video on the topic titration and I will illustrate the titration by a pictorial presentation, right? So here, what is called titration? Here, I have written about the titration, but before reading this, I'll just give you the picture how we are going to perform the titration. So for performing the titration, we require a burette and a conical flask. At least these two apparatus we require while we are performing the titration other than these two glasswares we require some other glasswares too but we are seeing them in the laboratory right now in the burette we are having titrant and in the conical flask we are having analyte so there is a reaction between titrant and analyte you may also have a question what is called titrant and what is called analyte and can we change the position of the analyte and titrant so i will answer this many questions one by one first i am going to illustrate the titration right titration is a process in which a standard solution is gradually added from the burette to the known volume of the analyte until the reaction between the analyte and the titrant is completed the difference between the initial and the final reading of the burette gives us volume of the titrant consumed against the analyte right so this is what we have written about the titration how we are going to understand this so that i will explain each and every term in the next slide so this is the burette and this is the conical flask in the burette we are having titrant so, as I asked you earlier, what is called titrant? So, titrant is the standard solution or a solution of known concentration that is called titrant. Now, what does it mean and how this concentration is measured? The concentration is measured in terms of either normality or in terms of molarity. And this concentration of the known solution is represented by either n if it is in normality and in terms of molarity it is represented by capital m so do you understand what is this so this is the titrant and titrant is having known concentration or its normality is known to us when you performing a titration and you have been given a solution of n by 10 or m by 20 or m by 50 n by 50 etc you come to know that this is a known solution and that known solution is generally filled in the burette the volume consumed of this titrant against the known volume of the analyte can be determined initial reading is subtracted from the final reading we will get the volume consumed of the titrant against the analyte right so normality is known volume is known in this manner volume of the analyte is known to us therefore we can apply the normality equation that we are going to discuss in the upcoming slides not here and we can evaluate the concentration of the analyte so as i asked you earlier what is called titrant titrant is the solution or the standard solution whose concentration is known to us. Now in the conical flask, we are having the analyte. And this analyte has known volume, but its concentration is not known to us. So with the help of the titrant, we are going to 
determine the concentration of the analyte or sometimes you also use the term unknown solutions. Here this solution is having one indicator which is of the same type of indicator the titration which we are going to perform. Like if we are performing the acid base titration then we are using acid base indicator. Okay. And by the help of the indicator, we are going to understand or we can also going to determine the completion of the reaction as indicator changes its color at the end point. So here we are having a question how this indicator changes the color. Secondly, as I ask you the question, does it is mandatory to have titrant in the burette and analyte in the conical plus? We generally follow this trend, but it is not mandatory. We can have analyte over here sometimes and titrant over here. For example, if I need to perform 2,3 acids against the NaOH solution, say NaOH is of unknown concentration and I am first standardizing the NaOH against the oxalic acid. So my oxalic acid is the standard and I need to have this standard oxalic acid in the conical flask and my unknown NaOH in the burette. Against this known oxalic acid, I am performing the first titration and after that in this manner, I will come to know the concentration of NaOH and then I have to perform the HCl solution against the known concentration NaOH. So in this manner, I have to perform two experiments. One is with oxalic acid and the other one is against HCl. And these two reactions I need to perform against the NaOH solution. So in this case, if I use this NaOH, unknown NaOH in the conical flask, then my oxalic acid will be here. And I first I perform the experiment in this manner. After performing this experiment, now this is my NOH is my known and HCl is unknown. So I need to shift the position of the NOH in the burette. Does it is wise decision to have this type of titration? No. So if I need to perform two experiments acids against this NOH, then I will have NOH over here and different acids in the conical flask. So it is not hardened part. So this is an, an example of the titration where we can have our analyte in the burette and our standard or titrant in the conical flask. So I hope you will have the answer of the question. Now coming to the next question, how this indicator works. So here I am showing you a small animation in which you are going to understand how the acid base and the indicator works. So as I said, these blue dots represents the base. So what is called base first? So here is the pH scale. These are the litmus paper colors in the acidic as well as in basic pH range. So what is called pH first? pH is equal to minus log of base 10 H plus ion. This is how we are going to represent this pH. But it means actually the logarithm of H ion concentration. The negative logarithm of H ion concentration is the pH. Here P always written in the small and H always written in the caps and log base 10. Right? So these three things you need to remember. Now coming to the pH scale, what is called acid, what is called base and what is called neutral. So at pH 7, we are having neutral. So the change in the color of the litmus paper doesn't appear, right? In the case of neutral or 
this in terms of chemistry we can explain this neutral we are having H plus ion concentration is exactly equal to the OH minus ion concentration right now coming to the acid acids are here is the color of the litmus paper acids change litmus paper color towards red side so what is called acid acid is having axis of H plus ion right and in that case the pH of the acids is less than 7 if we are having 2 3 or 1 it is very strong acids now coming to the base so base turns the litmus paper colors towards the blue side and these base is ha having axis of OH minus ion concentration bases have higher pH more than 7 if you forget sometime what is called acid and what is its range then you can memorize it like 1 to 7 first and 7 to 14 is the second pH range so A stands for acid and B stands for base and B comes later than the A so 1 to 7 is the acidic range and 7 to 14 is the and beyond 7 up to 14 it is a basic pH range and at 7 it is a neutral pH range now coming to the addition of phenolphthalein to the base what is going to be happen here you may understand these blue dots represents the OH minus ions right when we are adding phenolphthalein as an indicator to the OH minus ion it turns the solution into pink color how does it happens so first i am going to explain this how it happens so here is the formula or the molecular formula of phenolphthalein its iupac name is this when this phenolphthalein reacts with acid or with the base what is going to be happen in such a molecular form or in the acidic range Phenolphthalein will exist in this form and it doesn't have any color. However, when OH minus ions are in excess in the solution, then these OH minus ions react over here and they convert this molecule in this resonating form. And in this form, phenolphthalein is having pink color. Or we can say when solution is basic then phenolphthalein is in pink color or it shows pink color and when the solution is acidic phenolphthalein is colorless and its pH working range is 8.2 to 10 this is the phenolphthalein end point right so here what you have phenolphthalein changes its structure in the basic medium and it turns the solution pink now from the view rate we are going to add acid so here base is in blue dots and acid is in blank red dots right so i am going to add some acid to this basic solution or alkaline solution so on the reaction of acid and base we are having the salt plus water for example if i am having this naoh as a blue dots and hcl as a red dots then i will get nacl plus h2o in the solution now you may have a question this nacl is not seen over there yes you are very right this nacl doesn't seems to be there because it is highly soluble in water so we are unable to see this nacl as a precipitates right so when we are adding acid to this solution this acid and base reaction will gives us salt plus water and in that way the concentration of the OH minus ions which are present in the solution decreases as you can see so two molecules of OH minus ions reacts with the two molecules of H plus ions and they form salt plus water so concentration of OH minus ion decreases on reaction with H plus ion similarly when we are adding some more acid to this then other molecules 
will also react in the same manner and they will produce salt plus water and in this manner OH minus ion concentration decreases that means pH decreases right as we are adding the acid to the solution when we are going to add gradually the acid to the solution at some point when the concentration of acid is exactly equal to the base or they react with each other that point is termed as equivalence point and that again reacts with each other and forms salt plus water once these OH minus ions will react with the acid molecules at the last point all the OH minus ions will disappear or reacts with the acid molecules and at the last point after the equivalence point we are adding one more drop of the acid that acid reacts with the phenolphthalein and that phenolphthalein again converts to the colorless or in its molecular form in this form right in the basic medium we are having this as the base OH minus is completely furnished from the solution then the extra drop of the acid will react with the phenolphthalein molecule and, and convert this colored form of the phenolphthalein molecule on reaction with H plus to the colorless solution here. Yeah. So what inference we have made phenolphthalein in the basic medium is colored and in the acidic medium is colorless and its working pH range is 8.2 to 10. At this end point, we come to know the final volume of the titrant consumed against the analyte. And from there, we can measure the volume of the titrant. So, what is called titrant? Titrant is the known concentration solution. And what is called analyte? We don't know the concentration or the normality of the analyte, but we know the concentration or the normality of the titrant. And from burate we can have the volume which is consumed against the analyte. And if we apply the normality equation, what is this normality equation? N1V1 is equal to N2V2. So what does this 1 and 2 mean? So 1 represents either the analyte or the titrant. So vice versa. You can put titrant here, analyte this side. So it belongs to the titrant, right? It would be better if you use on your left hand side analyte so that your N1 will remain here on the left hand side. V, what is V1? V1 is the volume of the analyte what we have taken in the conical flask. What is N2? N2 is the concentration of the acid which is present in the burette. What is V2? And how we are going to determine this V2? So V2 is final minus initial reading of the titrant. So normality is known, volume is known from the burette, volume of the analyte we have taken in the conical flask. In this manner, only N1 is unknown and we can calculate our N1 that is the concentration or normality of the analyte. And from this normality equation, if we multiply the normality with the equivalent weight, then we can have the concentration term or we can have the concentration in terms of gram per liter. So I hope you understand how the titration works. Now we are going to discuss different type of titration. So we are generally performed in the laboratory for the BTEC classes and the BSc classes acid based titrations. Precipitation titration, complexometric titration, and redox titration. Redox titrations are of different types, and in this, iodometric titrations are also there. Now, coming to the different type of indicators which we generally use. So, for acid-based titration, as we have used the example of phenolphthalein. So, phenolphthalein is one of the acid-based indicator. Methyl orange is also used in acid base titrations. For precipitation titrations, we are using precipitating agents. For example, in case of silver nitrate and sodium chloride, we are using potassium 
रोमेट के टू सी आर ओ फोर इन केस ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्सोमेट्रिक टाइट्रेशन इन कॉम्प्लेक्स इज फॉर्म वी आर यूजिंग ई बी टी और द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ द ई बी टी इज इरियोक्रोम ब्लैक टी इन द रेडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन वी आर हैविंग डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ इंडिकेटर्स एंड आई हैव डिस्कस सेवरल ऑफ द रेडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन देयर सिंस देयर कैलकुलेशन आर लिटिल टीडियस सो यू हैव टू चेक द रेडॉक्स टाइट्रेशन वेरी केयरफुली नाउ कमिंग टू द मिथाइल ऑरेंज हाउ इट चेंजेस इट्स कलर इन एसिड एंड बेस तो मिथाइल ऑरेंज इट्स आई यू पी एस ई नेम एंड दिस शोज दिस टाइप ऑफ येलो कलर इफ द पी एच ऑफ द सोल्यूशन इज मोर देन फोर पॉइंट फोर एंड ऑन रिएक्शन विद एच प्लस आयोन्स इट फॉर्म्स दिस टाइप ऑफ रेजोनेटिंग स्ट्रक्चर एंड इन द एसिडिक मीडियम इट इज प्रेजेंट एज आयोनाइज इन दिस फॉर्म एंड इट शोज रेड कलर वेन द पी एच इज लेस देन थ्री पॉइंट टू so this is how this acid base works with the methyl orange and its working ph range is 3.2 to 4.4 now coming to the complexometric titration and indicator used in the complexometric titration so here is the formula of ediochrome black tea which reacts with the calcium ions and forms and it gives blue color and its working ph range is about 9.8 to 10 buffer is added to this complexometric titration to maintain the ph basic buffer is added to this to the titration of calcium against edta i will give you the link in the description box related to the titrations which i have already performed on my channel so you can check from there also and that will help you if you find this video helpful please like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching